Yes, everybody, it's me again. Aren't you lucky? Today, we've just spoken to Christian. He's an absolute legend. And now I get to speak to another legend, Polly Bateman. Where on earth is she? I'm going to hang around here. So I did begin the beginning of the conversation with Christian about what I'm doing this for. The reason why I'm doing this for is because I want to do more, have more talks, more hold more space um, for influential people, positively influential people. Oh, hey, hello. Um, hey, Megan. Hey. Lee, what's up, brother? On social media, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the audio and put it onto the podcast. That's what I'm going to do. So next up, we have the amazing Polly Bateman. I was going to bark. So Polly, if you're there, oh yes, Rob's on. What's up, dude? There you go, Rob. Um, oh, Mel, hey Mel. So we're just waiting for my man, Chisley. We're just waiting for Polly to swing on down. We've had no other requests from her. So Polly Bateman, she is an absolutely amazing elite mindset specialist. I heard her speak on Clubhouse, and the way she was delivering the, her knowledge on the way the mind works. The, the way habits are formed and created and how we can get up through those habits is was absolutely amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So I wanted to speak to her too. All the way, by the way, we've got we've got Lee and we've got Rob. Dudes, I need to have you on this. We're going to do a live at some point if that's okay with you because I definitely want you guys on the podcast 100%. Um, yeah, there we go. So we're just waiting for Polly. I don't know where Polly is. Um... Polly Bateman, the, the Polly Bateman. Where is that character? Um, just going to hang around for a little bit longer. Um, because the whole point of what I want to do is I want to create an understanding of how we relate to young people and how we can help them develop in this world by not putting our beliefs and experiences onto them, um, but only by helping them thrive on this planet their own way, as long as it's safe for them and safe for others as well, and not judgmental or bigger, bigger tree and stuff. You know what I'm trying to say. Scarlet's here. Definitely want to speak to Scarlet as well. Hey, Goldilocks bears. Love that. Michelle, hey. We're just waiting for Polly Bateman. Well, I don't know where she's gone. She's she's floating in, in the ether somewhere around the, the realms of Instagram. Let me just have a quick check. No. Polly. Where is Polly? Guys, I might have to end this and, and drag her in. Let me see if I can do an app. Oh. Let me see if I can get the Polly now. So, Megan, if you're there, would you want to do me a little bit of a favour and see if you can um, <laughs> message her, please? Would that be OK? Um, because I don't know where she is. Hang about, guys. I'm just messaging her in to come in. Here she is. Oh, yes. So I've invited the Polly Bateman. Hopefully she's going to swing on in. Yeah, so guys, if you're listening to this, we'll be speaking about mindset, the way the mind works, about forming habits between the young age and what we do. Yes, Lee, 100%. What we do, how are we still only five years old? Like literally, however old you are, 25, 35. How old are you now, um, really, compared to how you were operating as a five-year-old and what patterns you've learned to progress through your life? Um, and how that's showing up for you. For example, um, oh yes, Dr. Dina's, hey Dr. Dina, definitely to speak to you on a live as well at some point. Uh, how are you behaving as a, as a young child? So for example, I could have learned to be angry when I, was, when I was a child by some kid had a toy and I wanted it and they said no, so what did I do? I, I thought I hit them and they dropped the toy and I got the toy, result, I've got the result, wicked. So what has my brain done? My brain has made a connection um, to make you, oh, here's Polly, um, made a connection to make you think that's, a, that's, that's the way I should behave to get, to get something. I need to hit somebody or hit something to get something, which is clearly not the best way to go about things. And we've got Polly on the live. Polly, are you there, my good lady? Feel free to request yourself. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to get you to request. A, oh, yes. <gasps> She's coming. Yes, the Polly Bateman mindset specialist elite mindset specialist in my eyes but a good conversation but here she is <laughs> Polly, Polly, Polly. how are you i'm good thank you brush my hair but you can't tell can you <laughs> it looks beautiful it looks absolutely beautiful you see the, the trick is you want to get you I, I, I need to get i've got a big light here it's too much in your face i want i need to get a special ring light um because it, it makes it makes my complexion wondrous and beautiful. <laughs> Warms us up with the winter. It's the other day it I was on... 
I was doing a podcast and the sun came round the corner and I've got a big window behind me and one in front of me. And it literally came in and sliced my face in half. So I was kind of having to lean over to the side so that people could see me. And also so I could actually see. Okay, it's like frazzling my eyeball while we were sat there. <laughs> I'm laughing because if you, the worst thing is blinds. Have you got blinds in your house when, it's, uh, when you've got this in your face? You look a zebra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't actually have those. You but uh, because I took them down, I didn't like them. And then I haven't put something up in place of it. So I pay the price every time the sun comes out and I get fried. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, thank you, Legend, for giving us a moment of your time. I really appreciate you. Well, no, that's, you that's so great. Much. You know, I love what you do. Yeah. And I, love, uh, I love what you're about. So, of course, I'm, I'm more than happy to come and join you. Ah, yes. Well, I appreciate you so much. Well, I just wanted my audience, I just want to share my audience with you because what you delivered in the um, clubhouse room we had with Alex just perked my ears up. I was like, oh, my gosh. Mm. Polly is just completely finished because I forgot to finish it off. And it was just like, I was sitting there going, damn it, I wanted to say, I should have said something. And then in the next, in the next five minutes, you, you said, oh, what, what, you know, you finished it off and it was brilliant. So guys for, that are watching this, we were talking about, you know, the development of a child from the imprint phase and what happens in our learnings and our routines and everything like that. Um, and how they become, who we become because of our childhood, et cetera. But we're going to dig into that a little bit later on. But first of all, I want to introduce the elite mindset and performance coach, Polly Bateman, who do you have? You you have your own podcast, don't you, as well? Which is not yet. Cool. No, it's, ca it's not coming. Yet. It's coming. Yeah. So it. I've got a list of guests, mm. and we're, we're we're getting ready to work it all out. But yeah, it's been yeah. one of those things that's on the to do list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So you're hoping to use that podcast to um, inspire. Uh, inform and make more people aware about what you do? Kind of. It's actually as much as anything to flash the professional knickers of people that I know and admire as well, you know, because <laughs> yeah. there are so many brilliant people out there. It's, it's about having intelligent conversations that land helpful information, you know, and I, there's a lot of people doing it these days, but that's how we grow, you know, and I do a lot of podcasting. I, I get invited on a lot. And when I'm on people's podcasts, I get a lot of response after saying that made sense to me in a whole other way. And that's what I am really excited about is making sense for people, yeah. helping them make sense of, of their own stuff. Because most yeah. of what we deal with in life as an adult is like a blind spot. It's kind of like behind us. So every time you turn your head, you can't see. And we end up just dealing with life as we think it is. And we think that's it. That's it. This is life and we've got to deal with it and it's happening out there and I'm over here coping with it. And that's just a crappy way to, to live for most people, which is why we've got such a mental health pandemic going on in the world. Yeah. You know, if you could actually understand your role in your life and see your part in it, then you're in a much more empowered space for sure. So, yeah, you just, you just walked into that beautifully, didn't you? You've spoken before. You've done this before. I might have done it once or <laughs> twice, yeah. <laughs> but that's, 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 that's really good the way that you frame that because it's almost like, why do we need to go through life putting out fires? You know, coping with things, coping. What, oh gosh, imagine if, you know, you, you said to a child, to say, oh, here you go, go and cope with life. As opposed to go and go and flourish and thrive in life. Mm. Um, it's, oh my gosh. And you've been getting a lot of love, by the way. There's a lot of people that are saying, oh my gosh, you're amazing. I think we've got Nikki here, Nick. It said that you're amazing tech mum that's amazing Aww, this is going to be yes. such a cool conversation um thank so, you thank you to those oh, people <laughs> yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. so what is it that you what would you say your specialism is and how are you using that to help the world ha huh. do you know of course these things form and grow don't they as you evolve and mature in your own coaching practices and distinctions <clears throat> and often the more i teach a distinction the more i learn it myself you know, one of my favorite things to do at the end of a coaching program is thank the client if they are parting company, which often, you know, I don't want to create codependency. I want to create independence for each person. Right. And often when we part company, you know, they'll thank me for what they've learned. But I'm like, you need to understand I learned just as much myself. For every client I grow. But what I've settled on, which really makes me smile when I even say it is uh, restoring your relationship with yourself. Oh. Because when you can have a relationship with yourself, every other relationship out there is just a reflection of that. So your relationship with yourself gets fractured in our childhood, sadly, 
because of the way we are brought up. And it's from people who love us very much sometimes who will say things to us like, you've got to work hard if you're going to get anywhere in life, you know, and they put those little beliefs in. Money doesn't grow on trees, you know. <laughs> you, can't just, you can't just have, you've got to work for it. And there's all sorts of little messages that get coded into us. And we learn two languages as we grow up as well. We learn the language of speech and we learn the language of behavior. So somebody can talk a big game around you, but if the behavior doesn't actually um, stand up, if the behavior in any way, um, you know, you'll get people that are all, they're kind of all mouth and no trousers, as they say. And they'll, they'll say, oh, I'm going to conquer the world. Or I'm going to do this. I'll show him. I'll tell you what. But they never actually follow through. A child learns exactly that behavior as well. I mean, I can't tell you how many times there's a particular noise I make. I can't even pretend to know what that noise is. But my brothers all go, whoa, mum's in the room. You know, when I, I, I make this particular noise and pull a face and they all react like they're suddenly in trouble. And I'm not even telling them <laughs> off, you know. So we do learn without knowing. So much mm -hmm. of it is subconscious. And the subconscious learning that we have in life will drive you far more than the conscious learning that you've got. Because think about it. Everything we learn consciously at school, everything we learn consciously from our mates doesn't actually ever make the difference at the end of the day. And it's not just school and mates, it's everywhere. That stuff mm. never makes the difference because if it did, we'd all be happy. <laughs> we'd yeah. all be rocking and rolling, right? It's yeah. the stuff you learn subconsciously and you're wide open like a sponge as a child and that sponge-like brain is absorbing everything and trying to make sense. But the tragedy is at the ages that your subconscious is wide open, you do not have the ability to filter information wholesomely. You only have your reptilian brain and part of your limbic brain formed at that stage where you're trying to, limbic is for emotions and you're trying to control, you know, you're trying to learn emotional states and your reptilian brain is like, am I okay? Or am I not okay? And either of those states, okay goes okay all the way through to ecstatically happy and not okay is, you know, meh through to, I don't want to be here anymore. So those two states will just, and the point is it will either be that you're okay and you're in an okay resting state of some variety or you're in fight, flight or freeze. So as a result, as a child, everything is very stark. Everything is very full on. We know this about children, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, if they're on, they're on. And when they're off, they're off and everybody else can rest. <laughs> you know, that's what being a child is all about. Therefore, whatever they're doing, they're doing it 100 times everything is amplified and so are the learnings so you know you told this beautiful story uh in the clubhouse room about how your mum said stop it you're embarrassing me and in that moment you took the lesson i'm embarrassing that became a life lesson for you until you as an adult chose to start to undo what that really meant and you, you needed your full brain which you don't have to somewhere between 23 and 25 you needed your neofrontal cortex to start to examining it and you had to make, take a journey back essentially and revisit the situation from this understanding from this developmental age to be able to go oh that's not what she said oh i can chill out i'm not that embarrassing <laughs> Yeah. You know? And that's the healing. That's the yeah. healing right there. But children are taught through experience. You know, we, we put all our power outside of us because they're so open. They're so, you know, tell a four year old to run into a, a nail bar and order a pizza. They'll shoot on in there. <laughs> they haven't got anything in the way. Tell an adult no. to do that. Watch their stuff come up. They're like, what? Yeah. Why would you do what? Um, no, thank you. But all of that stuff that's come up is all the stuff that's in the way. It's yeah. all the stuff that you've learned about not stepping out of line, not, not doing something that doesn't fit with normality. Fit in, don't fit out, for goodness sake. Don't be unique. Mm. You know, we've, we've learned to almost resent our uniqueness. And the whole point of the journey I take clients on was down to my own personal journey. I mean, in my own personal journey was that I was genuinely a little bit lost in life. I got to 2016. I've been a coach officially for 11 goddamn years, right? I knew my stuff. I could charge a, a pretty fee if I wanted to. I've been coaching. I've done NLP. I've done, you know, phobias and anxiety masterclasses. I've done a bit of psychoneuroimmunology, which is the mind-body connection. I've got this stuff down. Hang on a minute. Shit. My life doesn't work. <laughs> and it was like, oh, man. I'm going to have to do something about this. And I actually reached out to a seven figure earning coach and said, what am I missing? And he said, well, you haven't been deep enough. 
you can only take your clients as deep as you've been yourself. And it was so annoying because I knew that it was spot on. And you know, when you've done a lot of studying and a lot of learning, you're like, sorry, you're telling me I've got to go in again. (laughs) And and basically I did. I took myself apart. I spent 18 months not seeing anybody. And at the end of 18 months, I offered a hundred free coaching conversations and basically took a hundred people well, actually, it was it was 76. Some people came back for more than one go. Um, but I took uh, these 100 free conversations. I took people on a journey to reconnect themselves in some way. And I, when we learn how we got coded, we stop saying things like, oh, you're such an idiot. Why did you do that? Oh, you shouldn't have done that. You know, all that negative talk that we've learned, by the way, that's learnt behavior. Nobody, nobody was born like that. But we were learned, we were taught it through our friends saying things to us. And nobody meant us to spend a lifetime carrying on thrashing ourselves. So nobody intended that. What they intended was to bring you in line and to help you see where you'd stepped out and to help you see where you'd made mistakes. But that negative self-talk carries on unless you can learn to self-soothe, unless you can learn to self-regulate, unless you can learn self-care unless you can learn self-love. And I used to hear that phrase, ooh, no one can love you till you love yourself. And it would be a bit like, what does that even mean? Because while I understood it, and I was perhaps ferociously defensive of myself at times, the defensiveness was because I was raw and I was hurting and I was covering up. And I wanted to know, like, if I was in a room, what would that even look like, that self-love? What would I be seeing? Because I heard stories of talking to yourself in the mirror, you know, and taking yourself out for a meal and none of it was landing. And it wasn't landing Mm. because fundamentally my own relationship with myself was so fractured. I didn't know how to be with me. And in a world where we are living a fast paced life and we're constantly, constantly on these devices, that's a great way to never be with yourself. That's a great way to never be bored and to never let the noise come up to listen to what's going on inside. And because we never have that time with ourselves, that's another reason why we are getting depressed. Mm. It's so important in our basic needs to have some time where we let our brain rest and we get bored. Yeah. Well, I encourage boredom with kids. So I'm so, so bored. Good. Yeah, yeah. Carry on. So it's funny, I, I, I know there's, a, there's one of the mums on here that I've definitely um, was like, loved it when I taught this. But one of the things I teach is a small section on children. And parents go, what? When I say, you are not responsible for your child's happiness. So many parents bend themselves out of shape trying to be responsible. Let's get you into a club then. Right, well, wh- why don't you go and draw? Why don't you do this? And I remember learning this myself, like, hang on, I'm not responsible? Because the thing is, parents out there, hear this, the more responsible for your child's happiness you are, the more that they'll put their happiness dependent on something outside of themselves. They'll put their happiness over there with, yeah, look, she's saying, I loved that, Polly, tech mom on a mission. (laughs) But you know, (laughs) it's when they put, um, and and I love that woman, by the way, she's an absolute star. Um, when, they, <laughs> when you put that outside of yourself and you put your happiness dependent on what someone else has said, you, you're screwed because happiness can only come from inside. So when my mum, so my mum, when my son rhymes with mum, that's why they, but when my son <laughs> says to me, I'm bored, I'm like, great. And what are you going to do about it, babe? Mm. And if he then sort of looks at me quizzically, I'm like, there's a room full of stuff upstairs, you know, pointing to his bedroom. I'm like, should we throw some of it away? You've never seen a child move so fast back to their bedroom and shut the door. (laughs) He's like, you're not throwing my stuff away. You know, and then suddenly he goes and reconnects and he takes responsibility for it himself. So, but it's it's what you said, but sorry to interrupt. It's so intriguing. I I love this Polly so much. It, it, it's like what a parent's been taught about that. T- parents have been taught to be you are, you are number one in their life. Your son or daughter is the most important thing in your life. For me, I, I, again, I get some raised eyebrows. I say, well, absolutely not. How, I think the number one person in your life is, is you. 
Well, because, so yeah. I, I, I really get what the, so there's two sides to that, right? Yes, of course they mm. are. You know, the one person I would die for in this world, uh, if yeah. my, chip, my kid, okay? Mm. I, I might think twice with everyone else, <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> but, so just as in, I mean, you often don't, right? Heroism and courage within ourselves comes up without thinking in the moment, for sure. But I definitely wouldn't even, I could tell you right now from this standpoint, yes, I would absolutely throw myself in front of something for my son. I would offer my life up for his. So he is the most important thing in that respect. But children learn, as I said, there are two languages. They learn the language of speech and the language of behavior. So if the language of behavior is not looking after yourself and putting yourself last, but you're telling them, right, let me sort you out, let me sort you out, let me sort yeah. you out, let me take care of you, then they're learning that mixed message through you. They're learning not to take care of themselves because that's what they're yeah. observing and your words don't match what you're doing. And kids are so, so bright. They are sussing mm. you out all the time. They're all over yeah. you. They've got you worked out way more than you've ever got them worked out. And they if get confused by that. Yeah, and I think it can go two ways, can't it? It can be super, super needy or people-pleasing. I think it, it depends if you carry on doing that. Well, a lot of the mental health issues that are around are because people feel confused. They don't know how to look mm. after themselves, which is totally understandable. No one's wrong for that at all. You know, we've, we've come from an age that is slowly, you know, we are slowly waking up as a species to a, a greater awareness <laughs> right on, a, on an epic level uh, greater awareness and greater consciousness and as a result we have to be kind of by the fact that our parents grew up in a colder harsher environment and they mm. were taught by parents who grew up in even colder harsher you know stiff bottom lip particularly here in britain come on son let's Absolutely. get on with it you know <laughs> I, I literally i took my son to um I took my son to the RAF museum recently and we, I picked up much to his irritation. He just wanted to look at the missiles and the planes and all of that stuff. And I picked up one of the things that you can listen to as you go round. And there's this beautifully clipped British accent of this chap saying, I knew I would have to park the aeroplane when I felt a hot shearing pain through my foot and realized I'd been shot. And it was just like so calm the way he said it. What was even funnier, he said, I came out of the aeroplane and I, so I noticed the enemy circling around me and I thought, you better behave yourself, chappy. And he did. He gave me a nod and on he flew. I thought that was rather good. And it just made me die laughing. You know, <laughs> these days people would be like, I thought I was going to die. I had my, my whole life flashed before me. You know, it would be so much more traumatic and that's okay as well. <laughs> but basically yeah. moving on from that, he said, so I looked at where I might land and I lit a cigarette as I was on my way down. And I was just like, wow, you know, the calmness and the, I would be trembling. I know that because I'm quite a sensitive creature. So I would definitely have been trembling at the very least. But it was just so interesting listening to the fortitude that we used to have versus what is seen by some of those people as a much more uh, oversensitive and perhaps slightly wetter sometimes mindset that we've got today but it isn't it's that we are opening up we're opening mm. up to understand the implications of everything in a different way and the sad thing is that we're opening up and we don't quite have the resources to teach children we don't quite know how to teach them how to have that inbuilt resilience you know and the next generation need to be resilient they're going to have to sort out a lot of the problems of the world that we've created through time and when i say we collective we ancestral we it's an everybody we you know there's no it's not us against them or anything because that that brings separation we're all one and as they're going to sort this all out they are going to need to be resilient resilience is the big thing and it doesn't land for people to be resilient when they don't know how to take care of themselves so learning how to take care of yourself, learning to understand your own needs. You know, I did it the other day. I growled at my husband. And I mean, like Ooh. literally, yeah, it, was, it wasn't this weekend. It was the weekend before. And I was quite scratchy with him. And I said, do you have Ooh. some reports to go and write? And he said, yeah, I do. And I'm like, okay, great. I'm going to go this way and you go that way. And it was about five hours later when I thought, God, I just needed some time on my own. I needed some time without anybody else so that I could just be with me. And at that point, you know, I went back and I went, hey, dude, I'm so sorry I was so grumpy earlier. I just really needed some alone time, you know, and I'm just going <laughs> to factor that in a bit more in the future. You know, so we all need like it. That. And it shows up in real life all the time. And our, our biggest thing is when we try to be superhuman, 
and we try to pretend we don't have those needs. That's another thing. That's just as bad as saying, I can't cope with anything. You know, mm. just get that polarity lives inside all of us. Mm. You know, there's a saint and a sinner inside of us. There is good and yeah. there's bad inside all of us. And don't put someone on a pedestal because when you do, you deny that that part of them lives in you. And don't mm. judge somebody because you're again denying that part of them lives in you. We've got it all. Yeah. So just be What's with the fact that you're everything. Yeah, it's like that perception is projection. I love the say. I love what you said about self care, and and I think what I just wanted to touch on ever so slightly with with self love because like I love as well that you were very real by just saying, well, you know, or oh, just look in the mirror and say I love yourself, or if no one loves me, if I don't love me, then I won't love me. I like to say to, and even if we if we do make a mistake, we say you bloody idiot, <laughs> thrash ourselves. I I liken it to Dobby from Harry Potter to the kids. <laughs> So, right, so every time you do something silly or silly, or I like to call a learning, um, would you do what Dobby does and just hit yourself with a big slipper? Would you do, would you, absolutely not. So, so what, would you, what would you say, Polly, from your professional opinion? Because you've, oh my gosh, you've had so many years of expertise. Um, how do you, how would you, how would you go? I know it's not, you don't do for the kids, but maybe I do. how you help parents. No, no, oh, no, I do. Okay, cool. I do do kids. Cool, Funny cool, enough, cool. I do do kids because I basically, uh, it, it's, and I have a, you know, I have a teenager that I look after at the moment and I, I, I do work with children. Um, and got myself all cleared so I could do that, you know, DBS checked. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no criminal record here but um so yeah basically um which, isn't it funny that when it comes back you're like phew <laughs> like, I, know. I know i, I didn't do nothing wrong, wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like why am oh, i relieved i kind of yeah. knew that that was the answer but anyway yes um and i've been allowed to breed right <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> gotta be okay surely <laughs> so the the whole point that i I, I go back to that whole self-talk thing. Um, so I look, I developed a character for my son when he was four years of age and we called it the grumpet. And the grumpet loves you very, very much. So the grumpet lives inside of you. He's got the best ears, eyes and nose in the whole world. And he's all fluffy. He's got my color of hair and he's got long skinny legs with knobbly knees. Now, he loves you and all he does is look, listen and sniff out for how your day is going. <gasps> and if he hears, sees or feels or sniffs or anything different on you or that he's not sure about, he'll go all spiky and runs around inside of you and gives you those funny feelings. And then what you have to do is get your ears, eyes and nose. And you and I do it when I'm doing it in a classroom, I'll go your ears eyes and nose and they're all like no <laughs> so, but you've got to use yours to then have a look and then you need to speak to your grumpet and tell him whether it's really scary or just seems scary and you've got to start to work it out now i made this up for my for my son and my friends were all like oh my god we're using it at home it's amazing <laughs> and the, the small part of you goes yeah well, you're my friends, you would say that, wouldn't you? But actually, it was when I was taking my coaching to another level, I did a, a self-expression and leadership program. And the leader challenged us to do a community project out there in the community. And at first, I was going to do something for the military wives as a military wife. And I remember going home and driving home and thinking, like, much as I love military wives, and we're all great, and we do a, you know, a big job, I'm so over doing stuff for the military. <laughs> and I kind of had this moment. And, I, and I, you know, they, they're not victims. They're only rescuing either. They're just cheesed off sometimes that they're constantly dealing with their husband's career. But, you know, I decided, actually, I want to do something for me. So I thought I'm going to push myself way outside my comfort zone and see if there's something in this, in this children's um, character. So I took it back to the classroom leader. And she basically said, take it into schools. And you know, and you're like, oh, no. Now it's going to get real. The rubber's going to hit the road. So I remember sitting in front of a, a whole panel of primary school teachers I'd got together and saying, what well, I talking them through the grumpet. And basically yeah. there was silence when I finished. And, you know, you're sat there going, oh, they think I'm a knob. <laughs> <laughs> Literally dying inside, thinking they're like, oh, bless her. How do we tell her? Ooh, off you go. Uh -huh. um, but actually one of them said, this is genius because every character that's in existence at the moment exists and you must relate to it. But the difference with your grumpet is that basically your grumpet is you 
And he's only yeah. feeling what you're feeling. He's only dealing with what you're dealing with. And when we, and that was like, oh, oh, okay. I'm not a knob. And so basically I decided to take it around some schools and I took this brilliant woman called Vicky and Vicky and I went around schools and Vicky was amazing. She was basically there to give me moral support and hold the boards up. I got a student who was an artist student to draw the grumpet as I saw him in my mind's eye. And so we had no book or anything, but we just went I wrote the story out and I would read the story on bits of A4 and she'd hold up these boards and basically the kids went mad. But what we discovered, which was, it, it, it makes me cry to this day. The last time I did it, I actually did it with the genuine book in my hands. And, and there was a little boy with curly hair. I'll never, ever forget this kid. And he just was so engaged and wouldn't stop talking to me and was all over the grumpet. <laughs> and at the end, this lady came up to me, the, the teacher, and she was one of the special needs teachers and she was crying and I, and I might get emotional, but she said, he doesn't talk. And he'd never stopped talking. She said, I've never seen that. So what we've discovered, which was a complete side effect, cherry on the side effectively, is that it helps special needs children who can't identify their own emotions, but they can identify their grumpets. Grumpets. Yeah. And it was just like, oh my God, I did a really good thing. You know? And it was just like, wow, this idea was way cleverer than I realized, you know? Yeah. And it, was, it got really exciting at that point. So I now have a school that has basically taken on the Grumpet and they're, they're calling themselves a Grumpet School. That's St. Martin's Garden Primary down in Bath. Um, and there's a very forward thinking headmistress down there. And, and I yes. have, um, and when, where I'm on a mission at the moment to basically put it online for schools across the UK and to run some free mm -hmm. teacher training, I'm literally setting that up and then hoping to get a little bit of press coverage to help schools realize about it, but working really hard behind the scenes to get this out there because I really want to get the grumpet into children's classrooms because if there's 30 kids in that classroom, there are 31 grumpets with the teacher. Everybody's got a grumpet and our grumpets can Everyone's laugh. got a grumpet. Right. And when we learn to soothe our grumpets and I just, you know, and by the way, I mean, I, I can show you him because the book's here. Oh, please. He's, he's this is the book. So it's called Harry, uh, The Grumpet, Harry and the Big Scary Slide. That's my son. When I had the book made and I had the- Oh, your, 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 your son's Harry. Yeah, yeah, that's my that's son so Harry. That's so special. Oh so when gosh. I had the, it, and this is literally how The Grumpet was made. When I did it, I was like, whatever you do, make me thin. <laughs> 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 so, so there's my grumpet, can you see it? That is genius, look at that. So he's meant to be gormless and kind of- ha like cute oh. and unoffensive and basically in this story i'm telling harry that it's not him it's it's his grumpet and he wants to discover and i'm like well you've got to use your imagination darling what color yeah. is your grumpet so this is harry's grumpet meeting mine <laughs> so basically no way. when he said mine's multicolored you know in your head as a parent you're like of course he is he was, he yeah. was going to be he was going to be glittery or something wasn't it so, so you're you're in this book as well then yeah well obviously yeah there she is. <laughs> there she is. So there's Harry going Beautiful. back to the slide, and he's a bit concerned about the slide. So you can see how his grumpet's become a bit spiky. Spiky. Right. And when he yeah. gets to the very top of the slide, we've got quite a comical one coming up. He gets to the very top of the slide, and he freaks out because it's so high up. So there's the grumpet totally freaking out about being at the top. So oh in the gosh. book, Harry has to soothe his grumpet. So what he does as he sits down on the top step and he says, it's okay, Grumpet, I'm gonna hold on tight and we're gonna sit down. And he waits for his Grumpet to calm down. But the process of his Grumpet calming down is him calming down. And then basically, you know, it's all about how, you know, he gets him to, back to that state where they're going down the slide together happily. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, you, you, oh my gosh, so you know the chimp paradox? Yes. You know, they've well, done so all the when, training. When I heard he you can do a chimp paradox. You can do this training. Out. I couldn't read it. I couldn't read it because I was like, I don't want to know if it's the same, you know. And actually, when no. I did eventually read it after the book was firmly out, it's, they're very different. So I'm like, yeah, because, you know, it's just that well, thing. You want to have your own stuff, right? I only, I only said that because that needs to happen. At the moment, schools are using the chimp paradox as workshops and they've got like a 12 stage workshop. 
grumpet workshops oh my gosh yeah that is amazing the feedback i've had from schools directly is that the difference with this is that it actually helps you handle emotions whereas the color system and the color monster that they've got in schools at the moment just identifies them well identifying yeah. them i mean with all you with all due respect that's about as much use as a chocolate fire guard you know we can all it's identify like, anger and sadness but what do we do with yeah. it yeah it's like giving them the tools to have that emotional sorry that emotional identification but not that emotional intelligence right um, and yeah. that emotional usage you know and, emotional regulation yeah exactly and one of the things that <clears throat> i developed was a kind of coloring in page for the grand pit and the point of this that in, the the link is in the book as well for this but the idea being so that everyone can just download as many grand pit coloring in pages as they want and the reason is is that your grumpet can change colour depending on your mood. So, you know, we had children in schools ah. colouring in their grumpets. And we had one little girl and she coloured her grumpet in 50-50. And one side was really dark and, and, the, and it was messy. She'd like scribbled over the lines and there was quite a lot of anger. And the other side was perfect, all within no the way. lines and everything. And the teacher said to her gently, so why have you done this then? And she said, well, because my mother says half of me is evil. I know. So no judgment on the parent there, because it could have been said in jest, but big flag, right? Big flag. But even still. That, yeah, big flag for what the child is dealing with. So when a grumpet goes, and we've even had in these sessions, because I did every background of school, and we even had in one particular session, and I, I was working with a specialist educator to help interpret some of the pictures, and we had a child like put loads of feathers and stuff all over their genital area. And that sort of, that's quite telling in its own right, just that maybe there's something mm. to address there. It doesn't mean that there is something, yes. but the idea if a, if a happy, sunshiny child stops being so happy and sunshiny and they're dealing with something like, like a separation at home or something like that, which isn't bad and it's, it's what goes on in the world, then the grumpet is a great tool for the teacher to say, what color are your grumpet today and how are they handling things today? You know, it's a great mm. tool for the child to basically express themselves through their grumpet and soothe Gosh. their grumpet because what they're learning is to self-soothe and that's one, yeah. one thing that we struggle to do as adults we struggle to self-soothe yeah. that's amazing i i use i use the every every child's got a, a dragon inside of them but that's even still there's a bit of a silly disconnect because it kind of doesn't belong to them it does belong to them but they can't identify with the dragon because the dragon's a dragon whereas the grumpet it's theirs and it's actually them it's their identity and they can change it depending on the mood they're in. They have control of it. They have the awareness of it. it. It's like a partnership. I always, when I speak to, to teens, I say, yeah, everyone's got an inner critic. Okay. Um, but we cannot scorn the inner critic because essentially it's there to serve you and look after you and, and kind of help you to survive. And if you had to push that further away, then you, you're well, just going to effectively... You're pushing sorry, away part of your own humanness. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like everything lives inside of you. You know, I, I saw something recently, um, and it, sadly it was from another coach, um, and they were saying that there is no such thing as hope. And, and I was like, oh, you know, I almost wanted to vomit on the spot because hope is a fundamental part of what gets a refugee family getting in a boat and crossing a dangerous sea. Hope is what a child has about their birthday. Mm. hope is what we have as a fundamental part of being human you know mm. i understand the point that that coach was trying to make what they're saying is hope on its own is futile hope without action hope without intention right. hope without good but that part was missing and they were just mm. damning hope and saying hope has put you in a victim consciousness and i was like well there's there's a whole missing here in this post you know that really yeah. rattled my uh, awareness because I was like you are literally telling human beings to deny part of who they are because yeah. fundamentally as a human being we are hopeful yeah I hope, hope is hope is um future joy right you know and you can yeah. create that but it's 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 yeah. birthplace comes for so, you know for, for so many people it's birthplace comes from hope yeah. so uh, the, the point is it's just that yeah don't ever deny a part of yourself don't ever think you're better than anybody else you know, well, you've blown me. Away. Sorry, I'm really no, it's okay. how, how how can we purchase material? <laughs> <laughs> Where do we purchase? get it? And um, so yeah. there is a website uh, which is um, very primary colours basic because that's that's what I could afford to do when I put it together. But it's called thegrumpit.com, and the grumpet is spelled 
Grump, like you're in a grump with IT on the end, not P E T, it's P I T. So G R U M P I T, thegrumpit.com. And um, you can get the books from there. You can also get them from Amazon. So you just go on and either search for me or I think usually it's better to search for Harry, uh, the Grumpit. Search for the Grumpit and Harry, Harry and the Big Scary Slide. And it's just a metaphor for life at the end of the day. It's a metaphor for when something overwhelms you, what do you need to do? You need to go inwards and you need to talk to yourself. The thing is, though, they can help everybody. Yeah, oh I my mean, goodness. I, you, we, you, I have a Grumpit. I've got my, I've got, I've, I've, I've instantly got a Grumpit now. Yeah. I never knew I had one. Yeah. But I do. So literally a very <laughs> clever friend made, made me this. And I take him into classrooms and he gets very shy and then eventually he turns and, and he talks to the children and they all go mad. And they, he doesn't have the teeth because it was as we were, she, she did what she could basically. Um, yeah. But yeah, when he wants to talk to the children, he whispers in my ear and I'm like, you want me to tell him that? He says, he wants your yellow sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, it is, we've all got a grumpet. And I yeah. will literally to this day, even though my son is now 14, say, my grumpet's super spiky today. I just need to handle myself and I need to handle him. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on. You know, I will out him. I will out that part. So, you know, um, yeah, thank you so much to Megan's break. Uh, Megan's break. Oh, break. Me Megan's amazing. Th yeah, Megan. that's really kind of her Megan's to put amazing. that out. Thank you, Megan. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate that. But yes, the idea is I'm going to put this out to schools for free and try and get it into every classroom and see what I can do to create some workshops. Because we do a, a workshop, we did a workshop where part of it is reading the story, colouring it in and then talking about our grumpets. And it gets children yeah. talking about stuff that scares them and stuff that excites them and when they have to handle their grumpet. So it's, I'm on a mission. <laughs> you, could, you could do, oh my gosh, you could, you could do a grumpet with different phases of life and the reason why i said that for is because in my head after all, all the clients i've spoken to this will be wonderful wonderful for primary school kids year sevens yes, year eight year nine year ten year elevens made it down 100%. but then adults after that will be like you know for me i mean i'm 37 i'm like oh my gosh i've got a purple grumpet um today he's feeling pretty chill he's went to the gym he's had his cold shower he's happy he's motivated he's on it um, despite wearing yellow, but it's purple's my favourite colour. Yeah. So I'm going to have a purple grumpet. But I'm thinking, would it be really cool? Because I'm running a workshop for social media for year seven kids, um, because I think they need to have an awareness of it, how to become, how to, how to be a producer, not a consumer, and how to use their creativity to inspire the world and impact the world. So what if they could be like, maybe, I'm just, you've probably already thought all about this, but for more workshops for the grumpet, you could have grumpet. Like, no, that's me. That's my grumpet. <laughs> When you said purple, I'm like, I have to get the picture. And actually, That's and me. here's some other states that he can be in. He can't, well, yes, he, he definitely does that. Yeah, doesn't he, right? He definitely does, he definitely does those states, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'd be, that'd be really cool, wouldn't it? But Just yes, because... no, I'm really open to this. You know, and I, I'm actually going to speak at a school on Friday, which is for 16 and 17 year olds who are quite nervous. They've come from quite tough backgrounds, mm -hmm. apparently. There was the brief I was given. And, you know, could I support them in what they're doing? And I'm like, God, yeah. You know, and I will talk about their grumpets a little bit as well, even though they're 16 and 17, because he's funny. In fact, yeah. they're not, the grumpet usually gets rejected somewhere between the age of 12 and 16. And then people come back around to, yeah, I have got a grumpet. <laughs> That's good. Get yeah. Rejected. Yeah. You know, yeah. so at the end of the day, it's, it's, um, it's just a tool. And we all need tools, right? Because anything that normalizes life as it's happening to you, that's the big thing is that when we think it's only happening to us and that this isn't life and it shouldn't be like this, that's when we get upset. But when we go, you know, some days are a bit meh. And those days are the days that actually also make the good days feel amazing. Because if you exactly. didn't have that and you didn't know that, you know, you can't have an up without a down. You can't have an in without an out, a left without a right. There is always both sides in existence. So, you know, it's just a case of, okay, this day, I can't wait for this one to finish. This one's been a tough day. I have those, but you've got to, we've got to learn that both days exist, right? And that's when you lean on your friends. That's when you go and have a, a pint with your mates when you're older, not when you're a kid, obs. <laughs> but, you know, that's when you do what you need to do to get through those days. 
But when you think that you're the only person and that everyone else has got it all worked out, particularly when we look at social media, and I don't want to bash social media, actually. I have people around me sometimes who say, oh, it's a terrible place. There's so much goodness on social media. There's so much great education. It allows people like you and I to speak out yeah. in a way that we wouldn't unless we were famous. You know, there is so yeah. much that works on social media. It's about having the balance and it's about recognizing, yeah. you know, that the whole picture exists there as well. So from that perspective, um, yeah, it's just about normalizing the fact that there is a whole range of emotions and there are good days and bad days. And sometimes your grumpets on it. Yeah, exactly. Social media is great if you use it correctly. You know, so sometimes, in, and sometimes nothing works. And those are the days that you're all out of sorts. But when you can self-soothe, when you can say, hey, look, it's okay. And I do that now. You know, to the adults out there, here's one of the things that I tell everybody to do. Sometimes when we're freaking out or we're upset, if we think back internally to the true age that we feel, we don't feel like the 35-year-old or the 45-year-old version of ourselves. We feel like a seven-year-old having a tantrum, right? Whatever age comes up for you when you take a minute to think, how old do I actually feel in this frustration or how old do I feel in this total anger that I've got right now? Just whatever age pops into your mind, that's the age that's probably when you first couldn't handle something in, of this kind of ilk. And it's when we get stuck. It's an incomplete process that we couldn't handle. We had nowhere to work it through. So we got ragey or we got frustrated or we got sad. Point being is, whatever age that is, go and get a picture of yourself at that age and put it somewhere like your bedside table. So I have a picture of two-year-old Polly and she's such a cutie. And literally when I'm upset, I will sometimes go upstairs and I will just, just take myself to me and I just say, you're okay. okay. You know, and I will also look at her and I'll say, I've got you, babe. I've got you, you know, and here's a line I love to use. It's somebody said to me, you should put that on a t-shirt. And I'm actually genuinely thinking about doing this. <clears throat> you are the adult that you needed as a child now. Oh. you're the adult you needed as a child so you can look after your nine-year-old your seven-year-old your ten-year-old you can soothe them and tell them it's okay i'm here i've got this that's one yeah. of the most important things you can ever say to yourself it's okay we'll work this out even if it goes tits up even if we fail here no as long as your head hasn't fallen off and rolled down the street as long as your heart is still beating and this is what i say has your head fallen off and my son's like no <laughs> i'm like then yeah. you're okay then you're okay you've got everything you need and i used to teach him as a mantra when he was growing up where is everything you need my love you say in here everything you need ever is inside of you and it's when we deny our greatness when we deny our magnificence that's when we get sad when we think that we're a loser and you know this this thumbprint i say to everybody you should put this thumbprint somewhere in your office where you could see it or your your space see your own thumbprint there is nobody in this world with that thumbprint even identical twins have different markers on there they have the same print but with different little genetic mar markers and that is your unique stamp that is an expression because, by the way, when you look at this, nobody ever looked at the thin print. Now, my lines are a bit squirrely, a bit close together. I'd like a bit more spacing. Nobody said that. So that's your brilliance and your genius. It's an expression of it right there. So look at it and admire it and remember how great you are. This isn't an ego-led exercise. And the ego, by the way, is your friend. Without your ego, everyone talks about the ego being the enemy. It's the enemy when it rages out of control. But without an mm. ego, you wouldn't even get out of bed each day. So it, That's it, what I say. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for coming for confirming that for yeah, me. Yeah, it serves a purpose. Yeah. You definitely need your ego to some extent. It's just don't let it rage out of control. And when it's raging mm. out of control, it's because you're disconnected from you. But when mm. you can truly be that, yeah, there is something about me that's unique and different. Then you can step into your own power and find your own brilliance. And when you do that with a child, oh, you watch their face light up. Mm. You know, they don't have to be good at maths. They don't have to be good at singing. They don't have to be good at anything, but they'll have their own thing that they are brilliant at. And it's about finding that uniqueness and that brilliance and that inner space. But you'll never let it out if you keep beating yourself up. So, you know, when you drop a cup of coffee or you make a mistake, if you hear yourself saying, you're such a dick, can't believe you did that. Just remember that's a learnt language. 
So the learnt language of beating yourself up is something that you want to just be um, mindful of, of taking and putting to one side and saying, okay, I can't remember who taught me that, or maybe I can remember who taught me that. I'm not going to speak to myself. Go and look at that picture of that little you and say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to speak to you like that. Like own yeah. it. Own it and yeah. be with that vulnerable little you because that vulnerable child in you is crying out for you to look after it. Mm. Yeah. I just, well, wanna, I, I, just, I just need to say hi to Phoebes. That. Phoebes 45. Hello, my lovely. <laughs> hey, Phoebes 45. <laughs> uh, I, 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 the very, I am the person that I needed when I was 11, when I was being bullied. Right. I, need, I needed me. This is, and this, this, that's all part of my journey because that, that little 11-year-old chose to put up with a lot more bullying but it was in the form of a work a deputy head when he was a when he was a PE teacher in relationships with friendships and he chose because that was his normality that was in his unconscious as we know and we thought well it's always happened to me so I'm going to continue and it's only until I was about what 27 I had a massive breakdown because of everything that happened to me all at once and if I would have visited now my 11-year-old self, it wouldn't have happened. Right. It, it wouldn't have happened. I would have had the tools. Like, we've all, we've all got different tools. The grump it is going to help thousands and millions of kids around. I just, I just know it. Oh, we've it's, all got it's, different tools to help. Every time somebody says to me, I, I had, um, a, a, I think it's called Tilly's House, um, this sweet lady who is a childcare person so she only has a few kids but she took mm. them to like a go ape type place but it was yeah. for obviously for smaller children there wasn't you're not swinging off a zip wire <laughs> too yeah. but they were going up like high it was like a sort of fort and they were across ropes and things like that holding on to things and she said we used the grumpet the whole way round. and yeah i miss you too darling i miss you too Phoebe. so i had the pleasure of coaching and um, Phoebe's dad uh, before he wow. sadly left us all. And one of the most moving things that I ever got to do was support him in writing his final letter to his daughter, Phoebe, who's on today. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's like, to this day, it makes me cry. And so just so she can see this, um, her dad sits on my desk. <laughs> Oh, so literally, gosh, so special. yeah, really special. So, you know, it's a real privilege when we get to work with anybody in this world, a real privilege. And it's, it was amazing, you know, because there was a big child in here that desperately needed looking after, right? And I, I really feel that Tony, her dad is with me a lot in my coaching. So um, yeah, when it comes to like, how sad is it, right? That when I got to somebody like Phoebe's dad, who thought he was broken as an adult, and he wasn't broken, there was nothing wrong with him. But he was, he was so awkward about himself because of all the lessons he'd learned growing up. So it's about finding your true inner brilliance. And it's about finding, and even, you know, when you don't find your brilliance, by the way, this isn't always about being the, the ultimate self. This is about just being okay with little old you, whoever little old you is. Because you're not a bad egg. You just had some dodgy coding growing up. That's all it is. And if we can restore the relationship to ourselves, there's a shed load more contentment and peace out there. You know, all that, all that trying to be something sometimes and all that striving all the time comes from desperately needing to prove our worth in the world. You have the same value on the day you were born as the day you die. The value never changes throughout life. You are valuable. But what does change is your perception of your value. And then we react according to the perception as if it's real. Mm. And it's never real. You're always valuable. Mm. Our filters that we see ourselves through can be through somebody else's eyes. It's so, it's, it, it's so tough, isn't it? I, I often say to, to people that, and do this and deliver this in schools, where I say, look, you've got, uh, let's say, for example, I've got to get six people out, say, roll the dice. What are the chances of you rolling the same number? And they say, oh, not very much, but one in 12, one in 24. And they give you a number and they're like, okay, cool. And they'd never do it, never do it. And they say, okay, cool, cool. Thank you very much, sit down. Now, what if we were to get 2 million people, roughly about the same size population as San Diego, let's get 2 million people, get them all in line, probably across the whole of England, 2 million people. And we would give them a dice, but not just a six-sided dice. This is a special dice. This has got 1 million sides. What I want you to do is get your 1 million-sided dice. It'd be a bit of a big one. 1 million-sided dice, 2 million people roll it. 
what if I was to say I want you to land on number 500,602, would they all be able to do it at the same time, kids? No, no, impossible. They wouldn't do that. I'm like, but it did happen. It happened to you. It happened to you. It happened to me. It happened to you because that is roughly the same percentage chances of you being born. Just think how rare you, you, you're unfathomably rare. You shouldn't be here. You are impossible. So let's make you possible. Let's, let's, let's use the miracle that you've got right now to enhance everything, everything that you're worth, that you, that you know you're worth. You're worth everything on this planet. And you, any conversation you have, can impact somebody. I did. I do a bit of a maths pro pro problem with them as well, and it works out if they if they make five people smile um, in a, just a week, not a day, just a week, they'll impact over uh, one one million people through the law of three. One million people by the end of the five years of, of school if they start oh, in year no. seven. Wow, yeah. what a lovely thing! Because you know that's something that they can relate back to something they can do. You know, that's that yeah. pay it forward program, isn't it? The film, pay yeah. it forward. It's the same thing. Yeah. If there's one mm -hmm. tiny thing that you can do, it's, uh, and uh, as adults, I know in a teaching, in a coaching space, that's taught as leave everybody with the impression of wealth. That's a kind of Napoleon Hill statement. And what that means yes. is don't leave them feeling like they've got money they haven't got. It means leave them feeling better than how you found them. Even if yeah. it's just passing someone in the street. <laughs> uh, the most beautiful human being, a chap called David Cunningham taught me this. And he talked through how one day he was waiting to go in the lift. He was in a hotel lobby waiting to go up in a lift. And the hotel, the, the, what's the door? The door opened. Um, yeah, we might get cut off, she's saying, Megan, because we've been on for nearly an oh. hour. So, and I've thank got you, to go Megan. in a minute. So, yeah, thank you. I love how her. great is Megan, by the I way. Mean, she's Megan. great, right? <laughs> I want a Megan in my life. <laughs> You're not having mine. She's mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, 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 the lift door opened and it was full. But it was a full with a kind of porter in there and a luggage trolley. And he went oh, like that. And he saw the porter just look down because there was nothing he could do, but he felt awkward. And he instantly got himself and thought, that doesn't work. It doesn't work to leave somebody feeling like that. So he went downstairs to where the porter would come. And he said to the manager, there's a porter in the lift at the moment taking some luggage out. Do you know who it is? And he said, yes, I do. And he said, great. Can I see him when he comes back down, please? I need to apologize to him. And he went, uh, okay, really worried about what had maybe just happened. But David was just one of the most graceful men I ever met. He basically waited and this young man came downstairs and he said, I'm so sorry I did that. That was uh, nothing to do with you. I was having some thoughts about getting up to my room. That was my impatience. I earn that. Thank you for everything you do. And he made him feel so special. Wow. He, he spent 15 minutes talking to him, asking him who he was, where he came from, what he wanted for himself in the world. You know, it doesn't take much to put somebody down. And it takes equally, even less sometimes to make somebody feel good, just smile at them. Just mm. say, no worries. We're so busy sometimes going about our business that we forget the impact we can have on other people. So just remember to leave people with the impression of something good as you leave them, rather than sometimes when we can just be a bit sharp. <laughs> yeah, and we never know we're doing it. Unless we become, we? sort of monitor ourselves a bit more, right, exactly. Yeah, it, well, well I mean, sometimes we never know we've been the good. Oh, so right, yes, the, absolutely, the, yeah, the, just smile. You yeah. don't know what it meant to somebody. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, was picking up, I was picking up litter with my little pug, and ages ago, ages ago, I just saw it pick it up, just put it in the bin, just don't whine about it, Dale, it's okay. My grumpy was going a bit, but I was just like, it's okay, dude, it's cool. Um, and somebody mentioned to me, so, oh, I saw you pick up litter the other day. You actually motivated my kids to do it. And I saw them and I was just like, what? That's so, you don't even know you, you're doing right. something great. So just do it. Who are you when no one's looking? I think that's really yes. cool. Yes. Just always yeah. try to be the best version of yourself. And if you can't be the best version, don't beat yourself up. Just go, it's okay, dude, yes. we got through today. We got through. Don't be a Dobby. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be yeah. a Dobby. I'm going to send you a copy of the book, Dale. We'll do that offline in a minute. Oh, my though. gosh, please. Yeah, I'm going to send you a copy I need, of the book. I, I need to shout about it because I'll go to a few schools as well. Um, so that would be brilliant. Um, but first of all, I, I know we've close. Thank you, Megan. We're close to an hour. And I know that you've got it. You'll need to dash in about 10 minutes time. 13 so, minutes. Yes. I, but that's fine. Yes. That's fine. Don't worry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me your time today. I, I, I think that we've got an idea of how to find you, but I just want to make it clear. How can people find you? What um, And how can people find, I know you've already said it, but how can people find the Grumpit for those that have just joined us? No, that's really helpful. Thank you for um, going back there. So I'm at 
the Polly Bateman. Had to put the in there because there is another Polly Bateman. She does something completely different. So I'm not in competition. Um, but yes, and my website is thepollybateman.com. But at the Polly Bateman, and I put lots of stuff out on social media. And then the Grumpet is thegrumpet.com. So the G R U M P I T dot com. That's the children's book, and you can also get it on Amazon. And is there a social media for the Grumpet as well? Yeah, it's yes. Yeah, sorry, God, Vicky, my 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 fabulous version. Come of on, Megan. Polly. I know oh. she'll be like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's at the Grumpet. Seeing it was at the Polly Bateman, we had to make it at the Grumpet. So yes, mm. he's there as well. It's a relatively new social media site. I'm really late to the party on social media. I'm just learning mm. it. So I have someone who is way better at that stuff than me. But uh, there she is. There she is, Goldilocks Bear. She's posting it all now. All links are in my bio at the Poly. Was that Vicky? Uh, she's called Vicky. Yes, that's Vicky. Vicky. Yeah. Thank you, Vicky. Yes. Appreciate you. Yes. Thank God 100%. she's there to catch me. <laughs> I know. Well, that's, that's, that could be your Megan. I've got, I've got a Megan. She, 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 yeah, she, yeah. she is my Megan. She is my Megan. She is my Megan. Yeah, amazing. Um, absolutely amazing. Oh my gosh, the Grumpy, you've just really got my creation juices flowing. It's so amazing. Oh my gosh. Um, well, I don't know what else to say. I think it's been absolutely fascinating. <laughs> I, I did not know. You, you've blown me away with the Grumpy. I didn't know we were going to talk about that. And you just absolutely smashed it to pieces. Well, I, so the cool. reason for bringing him in was when you said, you know, what can we do to help children? And it, it, yeah. it doesn't have to be just knowing you've got a Grumpy. You don't have to go and buy the book. You just know you've got a Grumpy. And he loves you very much. And he's inside of you. And he's constantly, you know, freaking out about your day. So learning to self-soothe mm. your Grumpy is the beginning mm. of restoring the relationship with yourself. That's essentially yeah. all we're talking about. When we can restore our relationship with ourselves, we can when we can understand we have value, and when we know how to look after ourselves. You know, this isn't talking about taking yourself off for a load of, you know, fancy treatments and and you know, sparkling champagne all day long or anything like that. This is just le learning how to look after yourself, learning to yeah. say, I need five minutes right now. You know, yeah. learning how to say this is a boundary, and I just need that boundary to be in place for the moment or for today. This is what I need as yeah. a human being. Remember, we're a human being, not a human doing. Yeah, love that. Mm. Oh, I love that so much. This is so cool. Thank you so much for giving me your time today. This is, oh, I'm, I'm blown away. I had no idea that we were going to be on such an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> seriously, with what you shared with all of your, you know, your clients. Ah. Oh. Absolutely insane. I'm so glad that we did this. I really am. Yeah, thank you, Dale. And I'm sure this is the beginning of a, of a, a connection and a partnership and a friendship here, oh, I'm sure. A, a thousand percent, a thousand percent. There's definitely going to be some affiliation if you're going to be all businessy. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. We, do, we yeah. love a bit of that. <laughs> we do. Thank you so kindly. Again, everybody that's listening to this and watching this, remember it's The Grumpit on social media, thegrumpit.com. And yeah, the Polly Bateman. Thank you. Yes. There's only one in my eyes now. <laughs> the Polly Bateman. <laughs> Have a powerful rest of your day, you Thank amazing, you. amazing lady. And my audience that are following me, please make sure you're following Polly because I've just been blown away. Absolutely blown away. Thank um, you. Dan. And this is the beginning of something really cool, I reckon. And say hello to Harry from me, even though I've never met him. I will do. Dude. He'll be out there slobbing yeah. on the sofa. It's half term. <laughs> oh, definitely. Slobbing. That's <laughs> <laughs> what 14 year olds are experts at. <laughs> oh, good. It's his skill set. The yeah. <laughs> it's the slob it. Yeah. Because exactly. I've new a new one. The, the, the slob it, not the, uh, not the group. <laughs> All right. Catch you later, you amazing lady. Take See you care. later, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> bye.